What up all my fight fans? Dana White has pretty much unloaded a large amount of fights for us this coming 2024. He has unloaded some fights for UFC 300. I'm pretty much already psyched up for the year. I mean, we got some great action fights. You ready for this? We got ourselves Robert Whittaker taking on Paulo Costa at UFC 298. I cannot wait for that fight. That fight was actually supposed to take place back in February of this year, but unfortunately it fell, it didn't fall um, into place. I believe Paul, Paulo Costa couldn't either make the fight. I'm not sure exactly what happened, what transpired, but the fight is going to be happening this February, this coming February, um, UFC 298. We remember Paulo Costa has not been in the octagon since August of 2022 when he fought Luke Rockhold and he went to war with him. It was a back and forth battle, but he got the decision win and he has not fought since then. Robert Whitaker has not fought since he has um, that loss, that unfortunate knockout loss to DDP. You know, um, with the new middleweight champion of the world, and of course the middleweight championship of the world is being defended January for UFC 297, these guys are going to do their best to fight for that number one contender spot. You know, with Israel Adesanya pretty much beating both of these guys, I'm sure they weren't too psyched. I'm sure they were like, not sure when they might be able to get a new title shot, but with a new champion, they, these guys are definitely up for a fight to be to be crowned the new number one contender. Also on that card, Ian Gary got moved with his, you know, unfortunately he was not able to fight this past at UFC 296, this past fight card, um, because of pneumonia. Hopefully he's feeling better. But Ian Gary is now going to take on Jeff Neal on this card. Originally, Dana White had moved it to Miami, but it is now being transitioned into this card, and I'm very much looking forward to that. These guys have already, already had a little bit of bad blood with each other, and with all the drama Ian Gary's had, and with everything that's been going on in his personal life, I'm sure he just wants a simple fight with um, someone and without any trash talk, but you never know. You never know. It's a really good step up for Ian Gary in this in this class. This is a really stacked class. I'm talking about the Walter White division. So... Definitely, definitely does not want to sleep on Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal, it is no punk. You got to remember, the last loss of Allah Muhammad was against Jeff Neal. So, yes, definitely, definitely want to take this fight very serious and not get distracted whatsoever. Um, also, also what we got is a few announcements for UFC 300. We got Aljamain Sterling going up to 140 and taking on Calvin Cater. That is a very fun fight, guys. A very fun fight. You got Aljamain, former Bantamweight champion of the world, moving away from the division, quite possibly due to the fact that you got his friend, his training partner, Marab, trying to go up for that championship belt one of these days. So, hey, he wants to step aside, let his friend go off, go after it, do his thing, and possibly become a two-division champion, you know, where he could possibly one day take on Alexander Volkanovsky. But before he does that, he has to go against some featherweights. And one of those featherweights he's going against is definitely one tough SOB for sure. You know, Calvin Kaler, yes, I understand he has lost to a few guys, you know, in the featherweight division like Max Holloway, Arnold Allen, and a few other contenders out there. But he is still somebody you definitely do not want to sleep on. He is somebody that you definitely do not want to take lightly. So the human backpack, Algernon Sterling, wants to go in there 100% serious if he wants to make a run at the 140-pound division. Also on that card, you got Alex, um, I think, believe it's Alexander Rakic taking on Iri Prohashka. Yuri Prohashka fresh off his loss over um, Alex Pereira for the light heavyweight championship of the world. And him being the former light heavyweight championship, a light heavyweight champion himself. Um, but it's unfortunate he did lose, so now he's back in the running. And he's going to want a chance to get that rematch against Alex Pereira. But he has to go through Rakic first. Rakic coming off a few victories himself. So these guys, you know, with the light heavyweight division, there really is no clear number one contender outside of Jamal Hill. But we do not know what's going on with Jamal Hill. We know he has that um, torn Achilles. And we know he also has some personal um, outside the octagon, you know, issues going on as well. So with that being said, we do not know when he's going to return. If he returns soon, that'd be great. You know, I definitely would love to see that fight against him and Alex Pereira. Those guys would definitely go to war with each other for sure. But there is no mention about Alex Pereira being fighting anybody, um, defending this championship anytime soon. So with that being said, you never know what's going to happen and what's going to transition um, with the lightweight division. But Yuri Prohoshka is definitely going to want a rematch, but he has to go through Rakic first. Also, you have the rising star, Bo Nickel, on that card as well. You know, there was a lot of rumors that potentially Bo Nickel was going to be the opening fight of the night at UFC 300. And, you know, with a lot of um, 
with a lot of steam, with a lot of, you know, pretty much popularity for Umbro Nichols' side. He's pretty much becoming this rising star and fast rising. While a lot of people already want to put him in there, put him up there against like Hamza Chamayev or somebody. They want to throw him in there with like the top three already. You know, but right now he's taking on a few other contenders and building himself up slowly but surely. And I very much like that. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing more of his fights at, um, in the coming future, for sure. Also, one of the fights that was announced was February 24th, a fight night in Mexico City. You got the rematch. Brian Ortega taking on Yair um, Rodriguez. And these guys had a fight back in July of 2022. And the fight ended very unfortunately with Brian Ortega tearing out his shoulder. Um, and, you know, I was very much looking forward to that fight. That was going to be a very fun fight because these guys always bring it. These guys go to war with every fighter they ever been in. Every fight they ever been in. You know, you've seen that war with uh, Max Holloway with both these fighters. You've seen the war a little bit with uh, Brian Ortega. Not even a little bit, excuse me. With Brian Ortega and uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. Good God, that was a crazy battle. And then you've seen a little bit with Yair Rodriguez and Alexander Volkanovsky. These guys pretty much bring it every time they go into the octagon. They always, always show up 100%. So I'm very much looking forward to this fight. I'm very much looking forward to this rematch. And I really hope that this fight we get a clear-cut winner. I do understand that Yair Rodriguez definitely won, or technically won. But it's a very unfortunate way to win. You know, I just, I don't agree with it. Still technically you won, but I don't agree with it. I would love to see an actual victory. You know, with 100%, no injuries, no nothing. These guys going to battle with each other. And 100%, a victory gets announced. And I, I really hope that happens in February, for sure. So guys, that's all the fight announcements. I'm sure there's plenty more to come. And let me know which one you're excited for at, um, right now. In the start of 2024, let me know which ones you're looking forward to the most. Guys, like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.